Hi, it's Chris here from The One Question. It brings me great pleasure today to introduce my guest, co-founder of The One Question, John Potter, of course. John, how are you doing, firstly? All good, all good, Chris, good. thank you. What's going on at the moment in your world? Give me an insight. Oh, gosh, busy, busy, uh, all over the place. Uh, but, um, but today I'm looking forward to talking to you and having a chat about, I think, Entrepreneur Week. Absolutely, so I thought I would introduce John to you guys today to talk more about the world, being an entrepreneur, taking you on the on the journey that John's been on, giving you uh, hopefully a valuable insight into some of the challenges he's faced and how he's overcome that. And um, so, w without further ado, John, John, we'll get stuck into it straight away. Just first of all, just for the audience, how did you kickstart your your entrepreneurial journey? Would you say? Gosh, I think that uh, <clears throat> goes back to growing up. I think like very lucky to have a father who was uh, uh, to me the ultimate entrepreneur and. Uh, I think he, he instilled in me a sort of a, you know, that, that desire to always look for, for opportunities and ideas and try and find an edge and, um, and, and with that, I think it's sort of, there's just questions, are you, are you born an entrepreneur or is it nurture or nature? Um, and I certainly think uh, you, can, you can become an entrepreneur, certainly, but, um, but for me it was certainly, I think it was nurture. Do you believe that an entrepreneur can genuinely be born out of nowhere and be <coughs> successful regardless of that upbringing? No, regardless, definitely. I mean, each individual is, 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 is different. Every circumstance is different, of course. Um, I was just very lucky to have that sort of drummed into me. Those who really are competitive, I think mm. they're driven to be entrepreneurs. It's, it's natural, it's, it's inbuilt. That leads me really nicely on to John, the, the, the next question, which is actually, what do you think are the skills or personality that, that's required to be an entrepreneur? Gosh, I think you have to be slightly deranged. <laughs> um, there you go, uh, people. <laughs> certainly back to, as I was just saying, that competitiveness, but not competitive with, with others necessarily. I think it's actually about being competitive with yourself. Imagine a city of tall buildings, and how do you be the tallest building? Yeah. And there are two ways. Um, you can either add your own stories, or you can do what a lot of people do, is and try and knock stories off other people. Totally and, okay with this. You know, eventually you'll be the tallest building once you've knocked everyone else down. Yeah. Uh, I think an entrepreneur has to build their own stories mm -hmm. and get taller and taller as opposed to try and knock everybody else. What is it that gets you out of bed in the morning? Gosh, uh, I think um, my first reaction when I open my eyes is panic. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, uh, lucky, I'm, well, I know we said this interview would be honest, but... <laughs> well, I've got offices around the world, so from, from Vancouver to Sydney to Kuala Lumpur, and obviously in, here in England and at Potter's Resort, um, and sometimes I'll be up at night um, working with Australia or in Hamburg or in Gdansk in Poland or something, so I'm very strange in my hours, so I wake up in weird, weird times, and whenever time I wake up, there is somebody somewhere who's been waiting for me. And so I sort of wake up thinking, oh my God, I've got to jump on my emails quickly. First thing I do yeah. is grab the phone. Yeah. Um, sadly, nowadays I've got to grab a pair of glasses as well. But uh, to just to nothing wrong with glasses. Come <laughs> on. And, uh, and and really scroll through the messages to check, you know, mm. who who, yeah. who needs just some whatever it is. Uh, once I've got through that, um, then then I think I'm getting up on a sense of responsibility because you know I'm flying the flag. Mm. Um, and uh, you can't just lie mm. around and say I don't care because. Yeah. Well, you know, it is. It defines you, and I suppose therefore mm. it becomes more than. It's not a job. Yeah. It, 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 you, it, it's all consuming. It's a lifestyle, isn't it? Yeah, I think. Yeah, it has to be. I think that actually, you know, I'm not at the top. In fact, uh, you know, I'm very much uh, everyone's servant. That is what being an entrepreneur is Love about. Um, and and I'm here just to make sure that people have the tools and the. the mm might be the motivation or it might be the whatever the sure. the needs are of those uh, of those people yeah. now of course you can only support so many so you know I do rely on an army of, of senior managers who report to me and they in turn hopefully understand that concept and understand that supporting mm. role they have yeah. all the way down the line until the front line and who yeah. support the customer and how many businesses are you a part of at the moment they're mainly hospitality and software uh, each one needs a different hat each one, you know, you know, literally having to constantly swap hats. Going, right, what am I doing now? Now I'm in the entertainment business. Now I'm in the restaurant business. Now I'm in the software business. Yeah. Now I'm in, and actually, so how do you make that switch? How do you put a different hat on each time you walk well, into I'm, one I'm, of your businesses? <laughs> I'm, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none, <laughs> to a point. Um, my my biggest skill in. Uh, in business, I think it probably is on is delegation. Okay. <laughs> when I Crucial say my, though. When I say really my awesome. biggest skill, I think the biggest skill in business is being able to delegate. 
So, John, if you could go back in time, let's take you right back, dare I say, <laughs> right back to the beginning. If you, what, what would you do differently? Do you know, I'm not sure I'd do a lot differently as such, but I, I guess in all entrepreneurial lives or, or stories, you're going to hear about the, like the fisherman, the one that got away. I have so many of those. Do you? And it's a frustration to look. I mean, I remember playing chess uh, online back in uh, mid '90s. And uh, I was talking, playing live, talking to someone in Australia on a BBC computer with, wow. a, with a voice synth chip. Yeah. And came away, and I was playing all night because in Australia, and uh, came away saying, oh my God, I've just been having a conversation with someone in Australia all night. Yeah. Whilst playing chess. Why are we paying so much for phone calls? This should all be done through this. So I had this idea of Skype. Okay. Of course, I was, you know. Uh, I was young and I was out and uh, having fun and whatever else and, and had the idea but didn't follow through on it. And I look at it back now thinking, well, that was Skype and actually all the technology was there. Now, whether I could have executed it or not, I don't know, but, but the idea was there. And then, then I came up with um, tvdinners.com and I set up TV dinners and I had this whole thing which we were going to deliver dinners to the home from favourite restaurants and, uh, and wow. thing. And TV dinners, you can look it up and set the company up and everything. Wow. And, uh, design the boxes and how you're going to deliver them like pizza but before all this sort of delivery thing came on wow uh, but I was a bit before my time the internet didn't exist then um, do you think it's easier dare I say to be an entrepreneur in the modern era compared to mid 90s much easier and okay. I think the biggest difference is communication right now we have all these omni-channel communications and always on communication it makes it a lot easier but in the same way double-edged sword uh, it's harder because now you're never off. You can never turn off. You know, to come back to your question of how do you sort of juggle, where do you know where the, where the fires are? And that's mm. really where the one question for me has come in. Yeah. Because I can look on my phone or my tablet or my screen and literally see the scores. Yeah. And I can see the scores that have dropped off. I can yeah. step or I can see where the fires are. So I know where, where I, I can spend time, yeah. my time to spin those plates which are about to fall or Brilliant. falling or whatever. Yeah. And I don't need to interfere or micromanage those managers or those departments which are flying away with the scores and going up in the right direction. Mm. And you think, great, all I need to do to them is to pat them on the back and say, keep doing whatever you're doing. So John, what would you say to, you know, for a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs that could potentially be watching this piece, what would you say to them? Starting off with nothing, they're like, mm. wow, look at John, look at what he's done, the business he's involved in. What would you say to those aspiring entrepreneurs to advise them on how best to go? That's a great question. I think uh, probably two things, really. One would be, uh, the first one, everybody today is looking for the quick win. Everybody's looking for the chasing um, the fad, which I liken this to, um, in, in the sea, you've got waves and you've got the tide. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to ride the wave. That's the fad. Yeah, but the wave's very quick. It crashes, and when it crashes, it's bad news. Yeah. The game's over, <laughs> and uh, you have to find a new wave, and that's not good for business. I think uh, uh, running with the tide, we can predict the tides. We know which way they're going, yeah. and if you can focus your attention on tides, not not waves or trends. That's what I'm looking for. The the the, the, way, the tide is like the the trend. Um, follow a trend. If I was starting out, very very key would be to perhaps look at what you are one passionate about but two good at what you can be good at and I think um, Michael Phelps swimmer Olympic don't know how many goals lost count but that guy has got um, a he's six foot four and he has a 30 inch inside leg it's got about size I don't know it's 14 or 16 feet uh, and a huge torso and a wingspan which is monstrous now, if he had chosen, he's a great athlete, the most, one of the best athletes in the world and a wonderful, passionate, all the things an entrepreneur needs in terms of determination, grit, you know, and, and, and a, uh, competitive with himself, all the stuff we talked about earlier. But um, if he had chosen to be a runner, he'd be rubbish. Yeah. 30 inch legs. <laughs> so do you think there's aspiring entrepreneurs out there trying to be something they just That's not cut really out what I was trying to say is that you've got to have a passion for something, not just for something. You've got to stay in your lane a little bit. Love that. Totally with you on because that. Because if you try and beat, if you're Michael Phelps and try and beat Mo Farrow, you know, you've got no hope. Yeah. And I think also while we're on that subject, you've got me going here on one. Uh, this is for right. young Far entrepreneurs. Away. I think it's, it's hard to be the best in the world at anything. 
it isn't hard to be in the top 25% of something. Okay. So if you can be in the top 25% of something, and you can do that literally on a weekend by reading books, going on the internet and everything else and becoming a, a, a knowledgeable person in a certain field. Yeah. If you can combine that with another topic and another topic, now you're the top 25% at this in this field, top 25% in this field, and the top 25% in that field. If you put the three together, you're now the best in the world at those three things okay. combined. With you. you don't have to be the best in the world at one, or if you're trying to be the best in the world at one thing, you're probably going to fail. If you can combine being pretty good at a number of things, you've got a very good chance of being world, not say best, like world class, or at least being able to beat the competition within that. You know, I'm, good, I'm a good cook and I'm a good writer, and then you become Delia Smith. <laughs> um, or it's, Love just, Delia. It's, it's just combining Love two Delia. things together to make you better than, you know, just a cook or just a writer. Uh, I like Dilly too, yeah. Um, and, Runs uh, a fantastic football club. Yeah, well, uh, huge Norwich supporters, uh, as I know you are and we, uh, we both are. But uh, So I think that's uh, you know, stay in your lane, um, pick something you're passionate about, but yeah. not just that you're passionate about, that, uh, that is a trend and you can excel at. I think that's super valuable advice. Well, anyway, that's all for this video. Thank you so much, John. I really appreciate the fact that you've given me your, your time today. Thank you so much for everyone that, that, that's watched. I really appreciate it. And if you're an aspiring entrepreneur, feel free to send any questions you've got to, to one of our social media accounts. We are at T1QHQ on Twitter. If you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, feel free to drop a comment down below. And if you've got any questions specifically for the man himself, John Potter, feel free to drop me an email, chris at the onequestion.com. Have a fantastic day.